Hello everyone. I want to say something and you may not like what I will say. I think some bad things that may happen to us, we deserve it. You may say to me, Uncle Calf, what do you mean? Why are you even saying this? Are you saying some of the bad things that I am going through right now are my fault? And I would tell you, yes. Aren't there some bad things you do? You know that are wrong. At times, inside of your mind, other times where, as it seems, you receive thoughts to not say that, to not do that, to uh, don't lie, don't cuss, don't try to get revenge, even though many of us may have those thoughts aren't there times when we just push away those thoughts and do what we want even though it is wrong i believe yes so if we willingly choose to do what is wrong what do you believe is going to happen do you think all the wrong that we do is insignificant, that nothing is going to happen to us, that uh, everything is fine, nothing will go wrong. Do you seriously believe that? Well, I have a scripture for you. Let's go to Colossians chapter three, verse 25. But he that doeth wrong, shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. So, this is saying shall. It doesn't say maybe. It doesn't say if. It doesn't say, well, it really depends on the occasion no this is saying shall receive for the wrong which he hath done so in essence if i choose to do what is wrong i am going to have to pay for it so i will have to reap what i sow so what i do in essence, will come back to me. So if I choose to do evil, evil will come back to me. Some people may say, Kevin, so if I do something to a person, will that same thing happen to me? And in that case, for instance, if I slash a person's tires, will someone slash my tires? In a case like that, I don't know if the exact thing is going to happen to you. But what I believe I know, if you do evil to a person, evil will come back to you. So even if your tires don't get slashed, Something else, I believe, will happen to you. And I believe the reverse is true. So if I do good to a person, good will have to come back to me as well. If I help the poor, if I visit people at the hospital, if I help people with learning parts of the Bible, if I give people advice, if I give people my time, if I am constantly 
doing good for people, guess what? Good is going to come back to me, and it has. I may not be rich. I may not have everything I think I want, but I am blessed. Yes, there are sometimes I do what is wrong, and that is not good. But I purposely try very hard, very hard, to do what is right. I purposely go out my way sometimes to do things for people. And I am blessed for it. I may not have as much uh, money as another person. I may not have as much uh, clothes or cars or uh, things. I may not have many things I own, if that makes any sense. But I believe I am blessed. I may not own my own house, but I am blessed. And I believe this is something we must understand to get back to my point. I truly believe our words and our actions are connected to us. This is one of the reasons why we have to be careful of what we say. We have to be careful of what we do. Because I believe what we say and what we do will affect us. You may be a very powerful individual you may think that uh, you are very strong and you have so much money you may be a witch you may have very strong power and you may believe you are untouchable but no matter how strong you are no matter how weak you are, you can't get away from, you reap what you sow. I can go to a poor country that is corrupt. I can go there and treat maybe some poor people very badly. And I may think, well, because I have money, I can do this and do that and not get into trouble. I may not be thrown in jail. I may not get thrown in jail. I may not be fined, but God sees what is going on. And I believe I will be punished by him. So, in a way, I am not getting away with it. If I treat very, very poor people badly because I have more than them, I believe I will be punished by it. There are some people who may always see themselves as victims. Maybe some bad things happened to them in the past. And perhaps it was out of their control. Okay. So what some of these people may do, they may do bad things to people, but they may believe inside of their mind they have a very good excuse for doing wrong to people. While they are doing wrong to people, they may still see themselves as a victim while doing bad to people, even though probably not many people do bad to them. 
in a way they may see the bad people do to them worse than the constant bad things they do to people. And inside of their mind, in their twisted mind, which I believe it may have become twisted because of demons, and I believe in their twisted mind, they believe that you are wrong and not them. I believe even if their brain is warped because of evil or whatever, I believe they will pay because you reap what you sow. We have to be careful of what we say and what we do. And I don't know how it exactly happens. For instance, and I may be wrong about this, I may do something wrong and bad things may happen to me because of it. I don't think there is a time limit. I don't know even the criteria. Let me make an example. Tommy did something wrong today, very bad. And I may not be right about this, but Tommy may not have to pay for that bad thing. Maybe it will take a year or two years, or it could be the same day, or he may have to pay for that bad thing for years. I don't really know the criteria. I don't know how exactly it works, but I know when you do evil, evil will come back to you. So it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to get punished. Just know you will get punished. I did some things that were very bad in in my past years ago if I am remembering correctly I believe I am dealing with some people that are similar to how I was but in this point of time I have to be humble I have to be meek. I have to be low. I have to be, I don't want to say a doormat, but I have to be careful of what I say and what I do. If I choose to cuss that person out, yelling very badly, insulting, uh, trying to get revenge, trying to get payback, uh, lying to get people into trouble. What do you believe is going to happen to me? I will reap. So, if I am being punished for for my past, or if... I am going through, or if I am going through a test, I should handle it with patience. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults? Okay. Glory is high renown or honor won by notable achievements. So for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults? So when you are punished for doing something wrong, I believe that is normal or that should be normal. So, like, what special achievement 
is there for being punished for doing something wrong? Like, should people praise you? Should people honor you? Like, wow, you know, you get punished for doing something evil or bad. Like, that is not really noteworthy. Would you agree? Ye shall take it patiently. So... Um, shouldn't you take it patiently if you do something wrong and get punished for it? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. So what God likes Yes, you was treated wrong. They cussed you out. They treated you wrongly. They uh, lied on you. They manipulated you. They ran and told your boss a lie about you and you got in trouble, but you were patient. You stayed humble. You stayed meek. You didn't cuss no one out. You did not seek for revenge. You did not, uh, you know, have a temper tantrum and stuff like that. That's what God likes. He sees the people doing you wrong. Do you believe God doesn't see that? He see that you are trying to be patient. You are trying to do what is right. You are trying to honor him. And that is what he likes. You doing the right thing, even though people are doing you wrong. This is the way we need to be. We can't really stop people from doing us wrong in a sense but what we can control yes we can pray about it yes we can fast and stuff like that but what we can control is how we react to it i can't stop a person lying on me i can't stop a person uh trying to do me wrong but I can control what I do, what I say. So to get that person to stop or to change what is going on, I have to go to God with it. What point is there for me to cuss a person out, to insult a person very badly? Not saying I am perfect, but what good is it to go eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I believe I read Colossians 3 and 25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. No respect of persons. So, even if I do wrong because I am being wronged. I will fall under that rule. I don't have an excuse to do what is wrong. Yes, this person did this to me. Yes, that person did that to me. I have to do what is evil to show that person that uh, you can't just do evil to me and nothing is going to is going to happen to you. That is wrong. Some people may think if you don't fight back or should I say avenge yourselves, people will think 
you are an easy target. You are, you know, let's keep on messing with this person. Let's keep on. And they may do that. But they will be punished. Can we go to Romans chapter 12? Some verses came to my mind. Actually, a verse. Let's go to verses 17 through 20. Yes. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Do what is right, no matter what someone does to you. Verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Try to be at peace. Try to be peaceful with people. Try very hard. Verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. And there is where I want to hit at. So do good for people, do what is right. Because I may not have power to punish you for treating me evil. You may live in Australia and I live in uh, Hawaii or something. For an example, not saying I live there. So you may, you might believe that since I live so far away from you, that you can do this, you can do that, you are safe, no problems, or you may be my boss and you may have more power than me. So you may feel like since Kevin is under me, pause, um, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can be mean. I can be overly strict for no reason. All I have to do is be meek, be kind, be low, be polite, not fight and argue, not insult people, not insult their mother and father and this person and that person. Do what is right. Going back to verse 19, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So I don't have to know everything. I don't have to be very smart. I don't have to be very intelligent. I don't have to be the top of my class. I don't have to be very powerful. What I have to do is honor God, follow his rules, and he will fight for me. There are benefits when you live for God. I don't have to fight my battles. I don't have to get the sword. I don't have to get um, the weapon. I don't have to go to an herbalist and do some witchcraft and curse people. And I don't have to astral project and visit people in their home and do this and that. I don't have to do all that. All I have to do is do what is right and I will win. Will I suffer pain? Maybe. 
Will I suffer hurt? Maybe. Will I have hardships? Maybe. But if I continue doing what is right, I will overcome. I will conquer my enemies, not conquer them in like, uh, you know, my foot is over their head and uh, they are a loser and I am looking down on them. No, meaning I will overcome the issue. So I will win. There are great benefits when you live for God. But let me stop here. May God bless us.